Hey, what's up everybody? Landon with LMR.com and welcome to the third installment for our Godzilla series and a Fox Body Mustang. If you have yet to see part one or part two, go check those out. In those videos, really what we do, uh, we bring you along for the ride and just kind of showed you what was involved at that particular time. Part one released last year, 2021. Part two released early this year, 2022 in January. Where we're at currently, we've done quite a bit of stuff, I guess you could say. Originally, really didn't say what we were doing, really didn't commit to making the thing run. Well, guess what? We're gonna commit to making the thing run and and in this particular video, we're gonna give you a rundown of all the components we've sourced thus far. And then at the very end, uh, we got a little surprise for you, so you won't wanna miss it. All right, so with the car on the lift, uh, we'll go ahead and start uh, up top and then we'll work our way underneath. That'd just be the easiest way to do it and explain kind of the components we've sourced, all the specialty stuff, kind of the expensive stuff we had to get, some of the odds and ends, just nature of the beast when doing engine swaps. So uh, we'll flip you guys around and we'll get right into it. All right, so here in the engine bay, uh, we'll start over here on the uh, passenger side. Uh, we've got a simple battery solution, negative, positive, we got all those uh, going to our solenoid. Probably wondering what this little guy here is. This is just a makeshift oil pressure gauge. That way we can monitor oil pressure. Run over to the alternator. Uh, this is just an alternator off of a newer F-250. Comes equipped with a Godzilla engine. Uh, so real simple setup here. Really all we're turning accessory drive wise is a water pump and the alternator. Nothing else on the accessory drive. So we should see little uptick since we're freeing up some power and torque with not having as many front engine accessory drive components. Got a simple upper radiator hose uh, down there. There's our lower radiator hose. We'll show another shot of that uh, when we go underneath the car. Up over here, passenger rear corner. This is our regulator for our fuel system. Inlet from tank. This is outlet to fuel rail, uh, which goes right here. Uh, this line here, that's the crossover uh, for the other rail in factory configuration. The Godzilla engine is a returnless fuel system. So we are converted to a return style fuel system. And then this line right here, uh, that's going to the rear of the tank. Uh, this is our SVE fuel system we've modified to work for a Godzilla and really all we changed, uh, we changed the length of hose and we added a 90 degree fitting to the fuel rail. So up over here in the driver rear corner, uh, you can see the master cylinder, you can see the brake lines uh, that we have bent. This is just a uh, simple manual brake setup. Again, we wanted to keep this swap as clean and as simple minded as possible just so we could get it running. And that is why you see manual brakes. So with the manual brakes, we also have manual steering, which we'll touch base on uh, whenever we go underneath the car. Flip you around here, SVE radiator, our SVE contour fans, uh, they're already wired up and these are triggered off of our control pack which is right over here. Now this is not the permanent mounting spot for the control pack, obviously. I mean, it's just sitting on a piece of foam in the uh, driver's side fender apron frame rail area. But this control pack here, this is from OBR Control Systems. Ollie is a gentleman that uh, operates that outfit and he does a phenomenal job. He is extremely knowledgeable. And whenever I reached out to him from the very get-go, he was very anxious to help us and wanted us to use his control system for our swap. You know, whenever I told him what was going on, what we were doing, he was like, Landon, I've got to send you this. It's great. Uh, it, it is. Uh, Ollie really, I mean, guys, it's an understatement. You got to have one in your hand so you could really understand how nice it is. But it gives you a pre-loomed and pre-labeled wiring harness. That way you know where all of your connections are. Now, at the time of this video, the, the only control pack for a Godzilla, kind of pricey, but I mean, y'all know the old saying, you got to pay to play. Uh, no doubt about it. This harness you see here, uh, that's for our quick shift uh, transmission controller. He gives you the ECU. He gives you all the necessary uh, smaller components uh, to make it work as well, such as oxygen sensors, coolant port block offs for the engine block. I'll show you where those guys are located as well. You got one kind of tucked right in here. Um, you can kind of see his logo on it. I'll point to it. There it is. OBR control systems. The other one is underneath on the side of the block and we'll show you that in just a second. And then there is his uh, map sensor. And the last thing up front, this is just a simple Ford original transmission cooler for a different application that we had laying here in the shop. That's just the way some of this stuff works. You just find something that may look like it's gonna work, you put it in and you notice, oh heck, look at there, you know, we can use this. Just a transmission cooler mounted up to the crash bar support. Go ahead and go up with it. First things first, we'll start with the oil pan. Uh, this is a really, really trick piece. Phenomenal piece of craftsmanship. Uh, this oil pan here is from a company called 417 Motorsports. And when we reached out currently, they have two options that you can opt for whenever you purchase the pan. Basically, you can get it with an O-ring type seal or 
a factory type RTV ceiling surface. We opted for the O-ring. I feel like most of y'all want this pan, what you're gonna go with, just because if you had to take the pan off, put it back on for whatever reason, you don't wanna have to deal with scraping RTV all the gosh darn time. This is a really, really nice piece. They give you all the socket head fasteners. They give you fittings. And this particular pan is about five and seven, eight inches deep all the way to the bottom. And that's gonna save us almost three inches from the stock pan. That doesn't sound like a lot, but if we take a step back here, I mean, the bottom of the pan now, you know, it's not the lowest part of the car. You know, it's not a what we were calling a, uh, a speed bump feeler like it was before. So uh, nice piece. Uh, it does omit the variable oil pump setup. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to source fittings and hose and then run a remote style oil filter. Real simple setup. Don't overthink it. Exits to the driver's side. Comes back passenger side and just a generic oil filter relocation setup. And again, there's our sender for the oil pressure sending unit. And for those of you that may be wondering, well, what about the variable oil pressure? What is it gonna do? Being that the connector's unplugged, by default, uh, the system is designed to just run max pressure at any given speed. Pretty simple setup. So right here, we have a manual steering rack that we had to use offset bushings uh, just so we could clear the oil pan right there you see it did rub a little bit it did make contact so that's why you see that white paint pin we did have to clearance the steering rack housing just a little bit to not compromise the housing and the tube uh, that's inserted into that housing and then while we're on topic of all this good stuff there is that other coolant block off from ollie right there on the driver's side of the engine block nestled in here in between the headers this is a maximum motorsports solid steering shaft Really nice piece. Those have been available forever. Uh, we absolutely love these things. They're a great piece, like several other Maximum Motorsports stuff. So, probably wondering, man, what about the headers? Wh whose are those? Where do I get them? These long tube headers are from Ultimate Headers. They sell very, very nice quality pieces. The stainless that they source is second to none. The welds are top-notch quality. This is their Godzilla swap header for a Fox Body Mustang in conjunction with a Team ZK member. Whenever we were doing this and we committed to the swap, we thought we were going to have to build our own set of headers. Well, we went that route. We had bought just a basic set of headers for a Fox Body Mustang for a different engine application. We were cutting, we were bending, we were heating, we were re-welding, and we got a ton of time in a set of headers. Ultimate Headers just so happened to reach out to us and say, hey, I've got this new header do y'all want to sell it we're like well what is it for and he said oh, a godzilla engine and a fox body mustang with a team zk member we're like man you're answering our prayers here send us a set yes we need some just so happens uh during all this fun stuff we knew the aftermarket was gonna, gonna jump on board and like we said in part one and two the headers at the time was one of the biggest pieces to this godzilla puzzle in a fox mustang the only thing we had to do we got to figure out a mid pipe for it which i mean it's gonna be pretty simple compared to what we've had to chase thus far there's a lower radiator hose like I was mentioning, water pump. There's our relays for our contour fans. And then right here, that's a strange strut with coilover kit. Previously in part one and two, y'all saw just a SVE lowering spring with a factory style control arm again. That was just for mock-up purposes. We knew that was going to change whenever we committed to making this thing run. We'll spin you around here to the transmission area. Stifler's cross member uh, holding up our 6R80. I know, I know, don't, don't beat us up too much. Well, automatic, it takes all the fun out of it. You know, that's space monkey stuff. Well, yes and no whatever it, whatever floats your dang boat you know we were going to put a manual transmission in but then we thought let's put an automatic in let's just get a 6r80 out of a junkyard and this one is out of a junkyard it's out of a 2012 f-150 two-wheel drive got 90 something thousand miles we paid around a thousand bucks for it a little less whatever at the time of this video uh, pretty good deal for it considering and when we take it to the drag strip it is going to omit a lot of driver error and we'll get a little bit truer results, I guess you could say. So yeah, you're probably gonna say, well, y'all can't drive a car, eh, whatever. So on the passenger side over here, uh, tucked in behind that header, you can see a uh, starter that is just for, you know, a mod motor and that bolted up right to the Godzilla engine block. Uh, so here's our fuel lines. Again, this is pretty, pretty to the point. We just follow the factory lines right into the back of the tank. And to control the 6R80, we're going to be using US Shift Quick 6 controller. I will show that in just a second. That's a nice piece. That's pretty much, I guess you could say, quote unquote, the standard that everybody has used thus far on standalone transmission controls for the 6R80. Uh, so we'll show you that device uh, real quick. All right, so we'll bring the car back down. I uh, will show you that Quick Shift 6 controller. But here it is. It's just chilling. But there's a lot of information on this. Y'all could check it out on our website, read about it. Um, like I said, this is kind of the go-to or the standard for uh, standalone 6R80 controls. 
a lot of great feedback on this unit and uh, we're excited to uh, be putting it in this car. There's some of the wiring, harnesses and pigtails, terminal ends for the quick shift six controller. Uh, we still got to wire all that good stuff up. None of the dash or anything was in this car. Like I said, it's just been kind of a car that we've had around here just for mock-up purposes and stuff like that. So Hubbard's just temporarily mounted an ignition switch with the stuff we need to make the car run. And for this application, that's all we're going to need. And then over there, you can see the pedal assembly for the manual brakes. As far as the interior is concerned, we're not going to go into too much detail. I mean, we'll make it look like a car, put a dash back in it, and we've painted it black. Primary focus of this series is pretty much all things Godzilla. All right, people, so that's a rundown of uh, all the components and stuff we've sourced thus far, everything we've done. A Hubbard's a mastermind at this stuff. You turn him loose, and uh, he just makes it happen. Like I said in the earlier part of the video, we got a little surprise for you, so let's go ahead and get to that surprise. Right, people so that's going to do it for part three we've covered a lot of stuff uh in the past few months and uh for part four we're going to drive the car uh we'll do a big smoky all that fun cool stuff you know there's still a lot of work to do granted you know there's no ac there's no power steering uh all that can come in time you just got to do that you just got to make it happen all right so that's going to wrap this one up go ahead and like the video subscribe to our channel turn on notifications and for all things fox body mustang keep it right here with the real enthusiasts lmr.com